What if you lost everything? What if you lost everything through no fault of your own? Uh, your job, your, your, your little 401k. What if you lost everything? And suddenly you looked up one day and you had nowhere to go. And you're living, I don't know, you, you, you pass under this, this overpass by a bridge somewhere. And you say, oh, I'll, I'll live here for a while. And you, you, you find a mattress or some, or some uh, cardboard boxes and you put all that together. Or maybe you, find a, maybe you find a beach somewhere. You find some sand to lay in. Uh, just to rest your weary head. And all your stuff, and you're like a like a turtle dragging your dragging your shell with all your stuff because you got nowhere to go. Can you imagine? I mean, Marcus Conti reporting today on something uh, not a not a sexy subject to talk about, but homelessness in America seems to be rampant on the rise. Seven hundred seven hundred thousand people in America on any given night are considered homeless, living on the street. I'm talking about the low bottom people not not homelessness in the sense of couch surfing on a friend's you know couch but the actual homelessness that we see all around us in new york city you see it you see it daily you know and uh, i i want to get out there and talk to uh, talk, start talking to homeless people and get into their minds and such uh, but uh, for today i just want to talk about the the bigger picture so look at some stuff so so there's a uh, an article out uh, on uh, Zero Hedge, Skid Row is everywhere, and we must get, we must, we just got confirmation that the worst is yet to come. Hmm. So it's getting worse, right? All over America, portions of our city, major cities, are becoming transformed into stomach churning cesspools of squalor. Thousands of tent cities are popping up from coast to coast as the homeless population explodes. Even the New York Times admits that we are facing quote, the worst drug crises in American history, unquote. I don't necessarily agree with that scenario of drug, that drugs are the reason why people end up homeless. Drugs become a scapegoat, a, a uh, comfort zone, a uh, something to ease the pain, you know, while you're out there, while you're, while you're uh, in the process of losing everything. It's kind of like, um, uh, it's a crutch. I don't think it starts out as drug addiction. I think sometimes it, it's um, the extreme anxiety and such leads one to perhaps you know uh, mask their feelings with drugs. Um, more than 28,000, uh, 28, this is Skid Row in L.A., 28,000 official complaints about human feces in the streets of San Francisco, excuse me, San Francisco. Last year alone, millions of rats are currently overrunning the city of Los Angeles and yet the authorities continue to insist the economy is in good shape and everything is just going to be fine. And you see, like, you know, pictures of squalor. Here in New York, you'll see it on the subway. Like, if you take the subway early in the morning on a Saturday and you see, like, you don't see the workers. All you see is, is the homeless people that are still on the train from the night before. And there's, you know, there's, you know, 30, 40 per train I, so it's it's very it's a very real problem. People hide. New York is a colder climate, but now you're starting to see them come out uh, or end up out on the street. Perhaps everything may seem just fine if you live in a heavily sensitized, wealthy suburban neighborhood and you only get your news from heavily sensitized corporate media sources. But in the real world, things are getting really bad. Uh, well, in the city, you could be. You could see it all day long, and it still doesn't mean anything. I had billionaire, millionaires and billionaires live a block away from, you know, homeless people. Homeless people are at their door, at their door begging. Uh, you see homeless people all over Wall Street, all over Wall Street. Walk around the, you know, downtown Manhattan. There's homeless people everywhere in the morning. I don't like to cover it because I don't like sticking a camera in someone's face that's down on their luck. You know what I mean? Like, so it's just not something that I ever really like to to but other people have done it for us so we'll take a look at that so um la spent uh six six hundred and twenty million dollars in taxpayer money last year yet the population of homeless increased 16 percent reaching nearly sixty thousand in la alone uh, skid row is no longer here skid row is everywhere 
Of course, the phrase Skid Row is everywhere could also apply to San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, Denver, Minneapolis, Chicago, Detroit, St. Louis, Memphis, Chicago, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City, and other uh, countless other cities. But without a doubt, L.A. is particularly disgusting at this point. Hmm. In fact, uh, last weekend, a, cl- a columnist of the Los Angeles Times admitted that the Los, An- Los Angeles has become a giant trash receptacle. We are seeing this happen at a time when we are being told that the U.S. economy is still relatively stable. Right, everybody, you, you, you look on uh, uh, mainstream media and uh, Trump administration, the economy has never been so good. The economy is on fire. Right? Joblessness is, is at an all-time record low with, with Hispanics and blacks. Everybody is working. Right? That's, the, that's the line of shit they tell us, right? But the government um, conveniently categorizes the ma- the vast majority of working age Americans without a job as quote not in the labor force. Now I've covered this before, uh, and so officially the unemployment rate is uh, very low right now. That's the official number, but the amount of people not in the labor force is uh, at epic highs. Uh, so, so what does that mean? It means that the the real unemployment the real number of potentially employable people, not old people, not kids, not, you know, incapacitated people, incarcerated, but actual, the number of actual people uh, uh, available to work, right? The, the, The amount of those people not able to find a job is probably, give or take a couple of percentage points, about 23% in America. That's about one in three, one, that's about one in four, one in five, one in five, one in four and a half, right? People are unemployed in America. And that's the real statistic, this is regardless of what what the uh, fake news media is uh, is is pumping us. So so here's some, some imagery of you know, Los Angeles, the home of some of the most desirable zip codes in the country. This is what it looks like. But right at the heart of this wealthy metropolis exist conditions that have been described by the city. You see this all the time, you know, like Los Angeles Times as a national disgrace. One expanse of 50 tense. city blocks is Tense cities, that's what we've become. Right? with poverty, crime, and homelessness. It's existed for decades and has dogged successive mayoral administrations this could be you. that have tried to eradicate right. it. It's called what happens Road. if it happens? Right? What happens? And it's home uh, no, no, nobody, 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 nobody in high school, counties, you know, in, in, in elementary school, nobody, nobody sits around and says, says to themselves, you know, someday, someday, someday I want to be homeless and living on the street. And someday I'm going to live on the street and, and, and be a homeless man and, 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 and have all my stuff in a tent. See, I won't have any bills. I'll have, I'll, I'll be able to, uh, I'll be free. I'm free of society because I live in a tent. Right? Nobody, nobody dreams of that. People dream of millions and billions. Right? The economy is, is more billionaires now than ever before. The, the income and wealth gap in this country is, is, um, is uh, off the charts. Half of all discretionary spending is put towards bombing people rather than feeding people or making some making life somewhat easier for the poorest of the poor. And again, that, that poor, that, that bottom line poor is, is increasingly going up. This guy is kind of interesting. Let's listen to this guy. Here's a, here's a, I like one-on-one. I like listening to people. You know, you could see this in New York quite a bit. But look at this guy. First, the first impression, you want to punch him in his face, right? You see him on the street. You say, "Look at, look at this guy. He can't get a job. Get a fucking job. You fucking look at you, man. You trash, white trash, man. Living on the street. Get yourself a job, man. I work. I work. I put my boot in your eye. You want, you want money. You want money. Go work for it." So let's just. We're here in Los Angeles. You're homeless. Tell me about it. Um, well, there's a lot to tell. Um, Los Angeles is a very, very crazy place. Um, I came here with my wife. Um, fam- her family said, come on. Um, we got on the uh, Greyhound bus. We came- were on our way. We started calling the first day. We left. And no answer. We figured. He- he's obviously strung out on a little something, but he's probably also very, very tired. He doesn't sleep. right. He doesn't eat right. He doesn't sleep right. His health is deteriorating. 
Hey, right, but he's and he looks like he's got a little bit of a habit of some sort. Right, but nonetheless, nonetheless, here's his here's his testimony. Just a fluke. I uh, called the second day, no answer, and from then on, no answer. We haven't spoken to them since. You come here and you you come here and you get stuck, and if you got nowhere to go and no real family to bail you out, which me and my wife don't have, you kind of are forced to go to Skid Row. Now, uh, Skid Row is by the bus station. It's it's where all the shelters are. It's where all the food is. It's where all the resources are uh, located, but Skid Row is a very nasty place. Um, it, it, yeah, go it, on. It, it will make it so you are constantly just worried about what you need to survive because everything's being taken from you. You're being taxed for living on certain streets. You have to pay. Um, basically, drugs run most of Los Angeles itself, but especially Skid Row. Um, Skid Row um, hurt me in, in, in ways that I can't ever explain. It, it made me do things, it made me see things that I wish I never would have seen. Um, it's amazing what people can do to other people. Um, you don't have to, I can't hear you with the tra traffic. It's amazing what people can do to other people. Um, I especially feel bad for the females here. They get used up in, in, in a whole different way. Um, my wife experienced that. Um, but ultimately, I've seen some great acts of kindness here. Um, I've seen some great things. The problem is you get trapped here. And people say, I panhandle for money. People say, get a job. Okay, well, if I had somewhere to rest my head where my stuff wasn't stolen, where I didn't have to worry about blankets, where I didn't have to worry about food, um, I might be able to get a job. But then also, I've been seen through this entire town now, and now I'm known as homeless. So to get a job, I have to leave the area. Um, I have nowhere to get a shower daily. I have nowhere to keep work closed. Um, it's not as easy as get a job, you know? Um, and you don't get much sleep. No, right. Because you're in survival mode, and the other night I met somebody, and it's, she is a stone while yeah. I was sleeping. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, well, that's a very funny uh, thing. Your shoes get stolen a lot while you're here. Um, <laughs> and who steals a homeless man's shoes? Your shoes can be completely worthless, and someone still takes them. And that's a really hard thing because you wake up in the morning and you've got no shoes. Now you got to walk around where people throw broken glass, um, people piss on the on the ground, cockroaches, um, and you got to look for shoes. And that's that's very disheartening. It, that's one of the strangest things that I've come across here. I've had shoes that are completely worthless and stink so bad somewhere, and someone still takes them. Um, but it's also sharpened me. I don't miss a beat. There isn't too much. I'm I'm pretty in tune with everything and everyone around me. Um, I'm a lot more aware than they are, I, I, I assume. Um, People I've, who have spent time on the streets are very aware of their surroundings. You have to be. You have to be, because if not, your surroundings will get you. You know, especially on Skid Row. You know, I don't go there at all anymore. Um, I, I broke from Skid Row about six months ago, and I haven't been there for a single thing. I broke from there for a reason somebody started trying to tax us, um, just on panhandling, bringing money back. They wanted us to give them a percentage. And then they started doubling it, and doubling it, doubling it until the number got so astronomical that there's no way anybody could ever pay it. And it's extorted. They're, they're threatening. Yeah. They're threatening yeah. violence or whatever right. Right. if you don't pay the tax. They'll burn their tent on. You know, I've had 13 whole tents stolen. I, I just got jumped the other day. I've been jumped 13 times, um, 10 of which I don't know the person, or the person is completely, absolutely insane. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is life on the street, right? Here's another one. This this is kind of interesting. Just imagine, just imagine for a minute, right? You give up the comfort of your own home, right? You got, I got my cat here, right? All my shit, right? All my stuff. We got all our stuff, right? And this this isn't the homeless person. This is just somebody reporting. You see, like, last year there was a woman staying here at this spot, and as you can see, she's no longer here, and yet all her stuff is strewn all around. You know, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like how, how we take care of our stuff. And then and then just one day you can't you can't sustain the shell of a life that you have. You can't sustain the roof over your head and you just end up you end up here. Right? Now is it mental illness? I know. There's a, a million a million ways that it stirs anger inside and says, Oh no, no, no. That could never happen to me. That could never happen, right? 
But the, the real cause of this, right? You can end up here and, and just, and there's your shit, right? There's your stuff on the street. Just like gone, you know what I'm saying? But, but really, oligarchy, right? Monopoly, right? Where the, where the income and wealth, there's some people with a billion dollars, so much money and so much wealth, and they walk right past you on the street. Uh, in New York, it's, it's especially uh, prevalent where you could have, you know, you could have someone with $50 million in the bank and they look like, you know, they look like just a regular guy, you know, sitting in a, in a diner eating a hamburger. Uh, and um, and right outside the window is a guy, you know, panhandling just to get something. Uh, but here's, you know, here's, look, here's a, here's a story of a woman, you know, she just, who knows who she was. But this is her stuff. This is what's left of her, 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 her life. If she's still alive, that she get out of it. With all the things we accumulate, you know what I mean? Our attachments. Got a cat food. She also had several pets with her, including, I believe, a couple of cats, a dog, and some birds. And they're no longer here either. So I don't know if animal control took them in or. If just look at this stuff, man. Your albums. I'm actually a little shocked by this entire scene. Back from where I come from, you wouldn't normally see this. I know there are homeless people back in the Midwest. There's your shoes. Someone had a real life and suddenly it wasn't. You know, it was like taken away from it, right? And, and all along, right? The fake, the, the recovery, the, the stock market has never been so strong, right? The, the, uh, the, the, you know, the investment firms are bending the rules so much. Keep that bubble going, man. Keep it going, right? Politicians, politicians lobbying for position and then, you know, saying they're going to, the, the centrists say there is no problem. Everything's great. Right. Deep state, we're gonna we're gonna drain the swamp and everything's gonna be great. But the the real problem is is and always has been if you watch this channel. I I, I mean I talk about it all the time. It's not it's not uh, a flood of immigrate immigrants into the country. It's not a um mm, uh, you know it, what it is 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 corporate oligarchy, corporate greed where income and wealth inequality, the gap has become so great. And the people that have all the money and all the power have lost touch with the people that have, you know, even a slightly less than them. Uh, they've lost control of it, lost, lost touch. Uh, so, so, so what do we do? You know, do we still get angry at, at, at the homeless people when you see them in the street, right? You know, look at, look at, look, look how good I'm doing. Look at that poor bastard. Look at that poor bastard. He can't get a he can't get a break. He can't he can't fend for himself. Look at him, right? And and it makes you feel good, right? Is that why, is that why the homeless population continues? We we have to we need change in this country. We need change in this country, right? We're we're on the wrong path. Trickle down economics, the survival of the fittest, stepping over people, and and work 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 work. And uh, if you fall down, people run you over. It's got to stop. That kind of that kind of, in my view, that kind of stuff. You know, some people say, oh, well, that's a childish, that's such a childish, you know, economic view of the world. Get, you know, be strong, be tough, be a man, uh, and um, and everything will be fine, right? But uh, it definitely makes you think, you know, 700,000 people in the country every night spend, uh, you know, lo have lost everything. And uh, just, you know, you're a bag lady. In, in New York, we call them bag ladies. You know, and uh, you see them with the bags. Everything in the everything that they own is in the bag. You know, Marcus Conti reporting. <laughs>